So, I have been very blessed in life. I have had parents that have given me the external permission and the external validation to be all that I need to be. Now, sometimes I honestly believe that my parents have more of a belief in my abilities than I do in myself. Now, I'll give you two examples. So, even when my mother didn't agree in my leaving my job to become an entrepreneur, she would still say things like, you know, you could be running Google in Africa, or you could even be the country manager for Microsoft in Ghana. Or there's a really hilarious story from a few months ago when Mark Zuckerberg uh, came to Africa. When I say Africa, he came to Kenya, came to Nigeria, didn't come to Ghana. And um, apparently, my mother and her doctor had this oddly serious conversation about why I hadn't managed to bring Mark Zuckerberg to Ghana. So, um, I do have a lot of friends that work for Facebook globally, but I'm not friends with Mark Zuckerberg. Well, at least not yet. I've also always had permission to fail. Before I was named one of the top five women uh, influencing technology in Africa, or before I started my company, Adult Technology Consulting, that became IT Consulting Firm of the Year. Or before I founded Women in Tech Africa, which is the largest women in tech group on the continent in 30 African countries. I was the girl that left her nice job in London to come to Ghana to start a business who failed. Even in that, they believed it was the journey for my greatness. I've always had external permission, external validation to be whom I want to be. But this is life. Now, when we won the IT consulting firm of the year, as it is with these things, um, there was a lot of congratulations. There's an amazing letter, not an email, a letter from an amazing woman in leadership in this country. In the letter she sent me said, because you stand up to share your talents and your gifts with the world, you are a blessing to your generation. And I read that letter in times, in hard times. But also I noticed that there was a small group of people that I looked up to that were really silent, that said nothing. I brushed it aside. I thought, you know, there's nothing there. Then we won a bunch of other awards. Then the words came. Oh boy, did the words come. Now, one entrepreneur who himself has won awards, many, many awards, and who's somebody that I look up to and respected, when asked about my achievements, said quite simply, why are they just handing awards to anybody these days? And the second one who was listening to me talk about my entrepreneurial journey on radio, turned to her friend and said, this girl clearly does not know what she's about. And it shows. You know, these things would not have bothered me because I'm pretty thick-skinned. It would not have bothered me if they were, these were not people that I looked up to and respected and people that were legends that I loved. And it bothered me and it worried me. And invariably with these things, I began to make myself smaller. When people would talk to me and congratulate me on my achievements, I would say something like, you know, don't believe the hype. It's nothing. When at the beginning of the year, I had a wonderful, amazing idea and vision of creating a global women in tech event coming out of Africa, I choked. And I thought, maybe I'm being too big for my shoes. Maybe I'm being too ambitious. Maybe I need to step back. I thought about it. <laughs> and I thought about it. And then I thought about it a little more. Then I asked myself a simple question. Does it matter? Does it matter that people that I looked up to and I respected, even if it's a small group, did not believe in the hard work that we had put in? Does it matter that they did not believe in what we had achieved? Did it change any of the things that we had achieved? 
did it change the impact and influence that we had? And then I realized it didn't matter. It didn't matter what they thought. It didn't matter what they said. I'll tell you another scary story. So Dropbox, which is the file storage platform that allows you to access your files everywhere in the world. Um, at the very beginning of Dropbox, the legendary Steve Jobs went on a very public tirade against Dropbox. He said things at conferences like, it's a feature, it's not a product. They won't last. Dropbox today is a $10 billion company. They did not only survive, they thrived. We have not only survived, we have thrived. We won two more awards. And my thoughts on technology and emerging market and innovation have been shared widely in global publications like Wired UK, European Business Review, um, Africa Business, and CNN and BBC. But you see, I don't say these things for us to hate the people that do not necessarily support us. I say these things because Invariably, when you stand to show your gifts and your talents to the world, you will naturally stir up some insecurities in others. It is not your job to soothe those insecurities. <laughs> External validation is great, and I've had wonderful validation in my life. But to be truly great, you need to give yourself internal permission and internal validation.